All right, so now we've requested the VPAT, we've taken a look at the website and the product, and we've gotten the VPAT back, and now we're going to take a look at it. So just taking a look at it can be kind of confusing because it's a lot of information that a lot of people don't know regarding accessibility. So we're just going to take a quick look at some of these things that are in the checklist while looking at the VPAT. So the first thing to look at is some information that is on the first page usually, which is looking at how did they test their product? Did they do it themselves? Which might be a red flag because they might be biased or did they use a third party company that has more expertise in accessibility and WCAG standards? What kinds of tools or screen readers did they check it with? Was it JAWS, NVDA, VoiceOver? Of course, the more the better because different screen readers work in different ways and sometimes they don't <laughs> for different things. And then the third one we'll look at is how was it tested? Was it manually tested by a person? Was there automated testing or a little bit of both? Manual testing is always preferred, but it can't hurt to also have automated testing too. So both is kind of ideal. So we'll take a look. We're going to go back to that same textbook that we were looking at, The Vital Source. This is for every ebook that they have. So not necessarily specific to that textbook, but hopefully that means all of their ebooks have these same accessibility things. Did I also put in the checklist how recent is the VPAT? And actually I should change this to 2019 that the VPAT should probably not be older than two years and probably needs to be updated every two years. Technology changes, textbooks change, softwares change, so they need to be tested pretty often. So this one says it's from last year, 2022, so that's good. It has some information about the product, which is good. Uh, it looks like this report is based on the results of an accessibility audit conducted by TVG Interactive. So they did use a third party. Um, testing includes manual accessibility testing, automated. So there's both. Assistive technologies across multiple platforms and browsers. So it is, I think they're using um, a browser based ebook tool. So they use different browsers different technologies, JAWS, NVDA, and VoiceOver, and different types of tools, color contrast checker, W3C validator, and then usually they also tell you what they're looking at, which most of the time is WCAG, and usually AA is the standard that is required. I think that's it. They gave all that information. Anything else that we should look at? So does the VPAT offer additional comments and explanation? This is really important if it ends up not being uh, something that's supported. Are there any areas of concern? Maybe take a note and then when you meet with the vendor, talk about them. And then this one is hard to do. I think that's why I put it at the end, but really having another person test it manually is really important. You may not have that ability. There might not be someone in disability services who can check it for you, but if there is, it's good to have another set of eyes on this because unfortunately we can't always trust <laughs> the publisher uh, when it comes to these VPATs. How many pages is this is? 14. So we're going to take a very quick look at the VPAT. It's going to talk about what the definitions are, if the software supports, partially supports, does not support. That's if it meets those WCAG requirements or not. Not applicable usually means that the software does not do the thing needed for WCAG and then not evaluated 
it's very often that triple A WCAG level is not evaluated because it's not required. So let's dive in. So here, this first one is non-text content that is about alt text, partially supports. So why not fully? They have some information here. Oh, it says decorative images in their manage highlighters dialog. Decorative images are not hidden from assistive technology. In the help panel, a decorative image is not hidden. And yeah, QR code has no text alternative. So they give some information why, what's missing in some of these things. Partially supports again and explains what that means. Partially supports with use of color. Color is not used as the only visual means of conveying information. With one exception, that highlighting tool, users can change the color. So that's kind of a user thing. It may not affect uh, all users. Audio control, here's an example of not applicable. Why? Because they do not have any audio which plays automatically. Is there anything that is does not support? Mm -hmm. Support, support. Again, we're just taking a quick look here. And then here's for level double A success criteria. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I am sorry for all of the scrolling. You can feel free to pause <laughs> and take a look at some of these things as I'm scrolling. Mm -hmm. We're almost at the end. Well, I guess, yeah, I guess they didn't have anything that was, does not support. So that's good. Of course, it's going to be very difficult to find any product that's 100% accessible for all users. Um, so don't be disappointed if a lot of the VPATs do have some issues. So for example, you could have a pretty accessible drawing software application, but naturally that's not going to be keyboard accessible. So, it may have some accessibility features for other people, but it's not keyboard accessible. Then someone who has mobility issues or maybe doesn't have hands or issues with their hands are not going to be able to use that software. So the important thing here is just to have different alternatives as a backup for students that have uh, different needs like that. So it looks like, well, and yes, a lot of times at the end of the VPAT, they'll say, this is not a promise. We may have missed something. The contents of this document do not constitute a representation warranty or guarantee regarding the accessibility of content access through our platform. But I do like that they say, if there are issues, please report these to us. And that's going to be a really important part of uh, the next step is how willing is the publisher to help when there are barriers in their software. 